Hello, 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 people of the internet. Once again, Ian Altsor, the Freedom Astrologer here, sitting again with one of my friends and a very, very good astrologer, Donnie. And we're diving deep again. I'm going to repeat myself maybe even more times this time in this video. But again, we're going deep into the psychic realms and maybe the deeper topics. So, Donnie, what do you have for us today? Well, today I think we're going to continue with our Psychic Intuitive series. And this time we're talking about clear sentience mm. or clear feeling. That's mm -hmm. what it is. <laughs> and clear sentience, I mean, at least to me, the definition here would be like it is a form of um, psychic sensory perception uh, created by an ability to feel the vibrations emanating from the body's energetic field. And these vibrations reflect the inner nature of someone out into the world. And they can resonate from certain areas of the body where it is, uh, where there is energetic distortion or states of dis-ease. And uh, it is usually activated by the development of the navel or sacral chakra. And is often referred to as gut feeling. Mm. Like, I'm sure we all know, you know, um, um, at some point in you know in our lives that we have this this feeling deep in our guts that something is that we can actually bypass the mind to actually feel into something whether is it for or against us and when we experience a gut feeling about a situation person or place we are tuning into this vibrational uh, resonance and uh, emotionally sensitive people usually have more highly developed placentians and like sponges, they are more likely to absorb the vibrations of people around them. Um, at first, it can be somewhat disorienting and make it difficult to differentiate between uh, one's own emotions and someone else's for that matter. However, once uh, mastered, placentians is a powerful gift and it is a wonderful uh, tool to our spiritual growth and growth of those around us via an outward rippling effect as well. And do I you wanna, have anything? I, yeah, I want to add a little bit here. Um, it's it's uh, obviously what I said a lot about, about other people and feeling their feelings, but it's what I uh, point people's attention also to places and uh, buildings and, and you know, um, um you know the geographical locations let's let's put it that way like whenever you go to a specific place a house maybe you're visiting someone you, you get a like a you know in your body you feel like like the energy is kind of maybe it's stuck or maybe it's open you know you 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 start to notice these things in your body whenever you move or or let's say switch the location where you're at i think it's mm -hmm. also important to kind of um, um have that factor in mind because it can all like when you haven't started to let's say develop this gift or, or uh, mm -hmm. understand it you know it can be very confusing like I'm, it is i'm feeling like <laughs> I just I was just feeling like this and now I switched I like drove to my friend's house like entirely different feeling in my body and this is one of the reasons why it can be happening because the vibration in that uh, building or home or flat or house or whatever it is can be totally different there yeah because it's like this clear sentient clear ability is really all about receiving clear information about others or places like what Ian just mentioned, um, through your own emotional responses and sensations inside the body or on the skin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this really can, can um, highly sensitize your uh, sensory perception. I'm talking about either like through, through your skin or through your emotions or both. And um, this really opens you up to detect the energies of an environment. Um, also, I find that clairsentient people who exhibit very strong tendencies are usually uncomfortable in dense public places. Mm. Um, they also can be highly um, um, perturbed 
when they're around a lot of electrical equipment because of the distortion in vibrational resonance between their body and the uh, and what's around them as well. I would also add that clairsentience is the most common of the four clair abilities. Like we're talking about clairvoyance, audience, now clairsentience and claircognizance, which we'll cover later. And um, going back to that phrase of gut feeling or gut instincts is really an ability to be able to read the emotions of others or uh, on a bigger level, it's about sensing the collective energy of a room. It all falls under this umbrella of clear sentience. And uh, I wonder, Ian, though, do you have um, instances where you're about to engage in an astrological reading with a client and minutes, minutes after looking at them or minutes before starting the session, you get goosebumps? Yeah. Because that's also part of uh, being clairsentient as well. You literally pick up certain vibrational energy from the other person it's, quite a well, bit. I, I want to uh, throw in a little piece here because it's very, very what I've been observing. Even let's say when I'm preparing a written one or a written reading for a person, I can um, start to feel the things in my body, what they're mm. sometimes where they're going through. But let's say right. when, when a person has a very strong Pisces, I'm the, the way I experience <laughs> even the re, doing the reading, I'm like, Ooh, like even it's hard to meet for me to focus. So I have to kind of uh, dial in really strongly. But when I'm doing uh, 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 reading for a Virgo, let's say, I'm very, even when I read it after, when I read what I've written after, it's very, very detailed. And, I'm, and my mind is like super, like very specific on detail. So I, I get kind of like, I think I'm going almost into, into the, the energy of the, the person who I'm doing this for. So the, yeah, oh, wow. for, certainly I've experienced this. <clears throat> so like clear sentience, just to bring it back a little, like mm -hmm. on top of, being like clear feeling or clear sensing. There's also other terms or gut feel, you know, which terms, whatever you are, uh, you are comfortable um, in terms of term terminology. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually one of the most common clear abilities, but it's also the most down to earth of all intuitive or psychic gifts as well. And someone who actually feels very deeply um, the ability to feel the present, past or future, um, physical and emotional states of others uh, without the use of the normal five senses, be it smell, vision, touch, hearing and taste. Um, but I would say that <clears throat> altogether, it all boils down to being sensitive in changes in energy. And this brings me to my next point um, of... Uh, Actually, Pluto is deeply linked with clear sentience or with this clear ability because Pluto really represents like the primal or raw spiritual energy that brings along with it. And um, subterranean feelings, what's actually buried underneath uh, in the emotional plane and digging down deeply into the psychic ground to locate the truth in terms of releasing and uh, releasing the repressed within. So which planet would you uh, attribute, attribute class sentience to personally? I, I do like Pluto uh, here uh, mostly. And uh, I think we talked about, you know, bringing in the sign of Scorpio as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I would a little bit bring in Mars a tiny bit right. here because it's right. you know still connected to Scorpio and Pluto right. and you know the, it's the natural ruler of the first house so it's kind of like the body and you feel it but I would say like the deeper part of it it's still Pluto uh, for sure because Pluto is so deep in it, you know it can I think it can um, how I experience Pluto is it it's goes to depths that sometimes 
it's very hard for the mind to understand where the, this Pluto, this deep feeling energy even goes to. And it brings those kind of feelings. And, you know, sometimes I don't know even what they bring <laughs> energies, you know, up, up to the surface for you to experience, for you to kind of uh, translate uh, yeah. into, the, 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 into the material realm or for others, if you're working with people, you know, it's, it's a very, very deep energy here <clears throat> for sure. I was thinking that how people can tell that they are class sentient, what signs they can exhibit, mm, because that, there'll be a very good indicator, like, like how do people know that I have this? What mm -hmm. are the like, you know, day-to-day -day or mundane, practical like stuff that I need to look out for if I want to know that whether I have it? Because it's the most common one that's out there among the four clear abilities. Um, and you'll be able to feel it a lot because it's the most down to earth uh, one of the uh, psychic intuitive um, talents or gifts that we that, that we're going to discuss in this series. So you need to ask yourself whether you sense other people's motives, feelings, and next moves without even greeting or interacting with them directly. <coughs> There's one of them. Or do your loved ones see you as the go-to person when it comes to gut feelings? That means you're known to have some kind of accurate prognosis, you know, that's coming from your gut that people recognize that what you're known for. Um, I also encountered that, um, you know, people tend to use the phrase, I feel or I sense that a lot. Yeah. Usually, subconsciously, they do have that, that class sentient ability, but it may not even occur to them. They keep on, re they keep on using the phrase, I feel or I sense that a lot. Mm -hmm. you know? um, people may prefer to experience things as well, more than others. And uh, because we're dealing with Pluto, right, which can take you to the deep realms, <laughs> So the counterbalance of uh, Pluto's uh, sign Scorpio, uh, Pluto's ruling sign Scorpio is the opposite sign of Taurus. So for class sentient people, I find that they really enjoy nature, animals and wildlife just to ground themselves. And to actually recharge themselves, they need quiet time alone for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the next one will be like being sensitive to, to, uh, to your environment, sensitive to energies around you. Um, one is being capable to experience both or feel both inner and outer energy in a more intuitive way as well. The next one I've written here is um, getting goosebumps or tingles for no apparent reason. I'm sure all of us at some point would have like, you know, gotten that sensation, but pe people who are like more skewed towards class sentient um, um, disability will experience it more. And it can just come out of nowhere. Class sentient people uh, would usually be known as empaths as well. And very empathic to... Uh, uh, to your friends' emotions and energies. And large crowds and busy places can drain or easily overwhelm you. There's very much of the Plutonian, like wanting to distance yourself away. And I really tune into that purity of um, energy, be it within and also around them. So having large crowds and busy places just don't cut it. Um, I wonder if during your readings, whether you pick up on the mood of um, your clients, <clears throat> their emotions and thoughts as well, or you can sense like um, the other person's intentions when you give readings. I would say personally, sometimes, but it's, it's very much what I, um, what I experience, what I feel is, is like uh, usually 
when a person comes to me, there's a like a there's usually a topic, um, usually a deeper topic that is let's say meant to be discovered in that let's say yeah, yeah. meeting. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. And it's almost like what they ask isn't like what is really bugging them. This is basically <laughs> like this is the like tip of the iceberg, and like like the iceberg starts to melt, and then the deeper one starts to come. But what this is this is one of the ways you can um, notice this uh, is like that when whenever you enter a meeting, this can also be like a meeting room, you know, whatever mm -hmm. other place you can use this. But when you go into that meeting and you feel like the energy <clears throat> of the situation is kind of like stuck, so in your body it can feel like like almost like like some sort of tension is there like some something is holding or like 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 squeezing it almost in in the body and once you start kind of unraveling that a little bit you you ask and uh, you know they speak and you mention some of the aspects maybe and you ask them more questions you start to notice <clears throat> that the, that the sensation or feeling in your body starts to unravel and right. it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And once like the core issue is touched upon, then you're like, oh, oh it's like it's like a liberation <laughs> or the freedom. You know, that's why one of the reasons I would call myself the freedom astrologer is is like that this is what we actually want. This is what like one of my I think my work is built upon is like the sensation of of liberation and feeling that you are, you know, not um imprisoned by your you know psychological uh, impulses and thoughts and ideas what pluto represents a lot and you're 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 free from those and you can live freely uh, energetically as well in your within your body um, i think this and you can so can i say it. yeah go ahead so can i say that like piggy piggyback on what you just said do you usually get the the comment or feedback that you easily relate to others and their situations? Mm, I think I've gotten that a lot, yes. Maybe not, you know, not everybody says that, <laughs> obviously. But, <laughs> but yeah, mostly because, I've gotten that. Because there's also like, a, a, because wherever Pluto, because we're talking about Pluto as the main like um, attributor to clairsentient, it can also sensitize you a lot in a lot of ways in order to like Pluto actually want to merge with another. So like, if you go back to the um, definition, which I made much earlier in this video, it's like, you don't know sometimes whether is it your mm -hmm. feeling or is it other people's feeling as well. And sometimes you be, you might be called like too melodramatic or too sensitive, um, but you strongly feel within your your being and your gut, you know, like regarding certain situations, decisions, places and people. This can be like buildings and outside areas, like what Ian mentioned earlier, that's invisible to the physical senses. I have one. I want to mention one good yeah. thing that you guys can really, uh, every anybody can try this out, basically is let's say <clears throat> you know maybe you're still in in a corporate career or you do like the corporate world you, you prefer to stay there pay attention what starts happening at the end of days <clears throat> so this is what i mean by this is around 5 p.m ish or 6 p.m ish whatever the you know in your country mm -hmm. the ending of the day is if you start noticing some sort of anxiety within your body it is most likely that you're picking up on the the let's say the general anxiety mm. in the, in the area because a lot is floating people, in the air exactly because <laughs> a lot of people because a lot of people during that time are like oh my god it's 5 p.m i want to get the, out yeah. of here you know the anxiousness and they're looking at the time and they're looking at the time if you pick up on that you probably have this um gift <laughs> so it's just a simple way to test it out in the real world <laughs> i've also written here that uh, for class sentient people um one thing you have to note is that um be aware of buying old stuff mm. <laughs> because you have the ability to feel or sense intuitive messages through physical touch or emotion mm -hmm. 
So for class sentient people, if you go into a like vintage store and they touch something, for those really advanced ones, they may actually pick up on certain things as well, for sure. which for can sure. be overwhelming. And this may actually, why I want to say this is because I actually went with a friend who's very like well-developed in the clairsentient ability. Mm. And once she actually touched something that's been passed down uh, via many ge- generations that's being sold in the shop, her mood and emotions just changed suddenly for no apparent reason. No intriguing. So, so that is also like, uh, but she, she, she has well developed class sentence, but she is not aware of it. And sometimes she really feels that she's like going crazy or pe- she's being known as the crazy one. So, yeah, <laughs> this is one of those that, um, if you don't acknowledge it and give it space to develop, it can consume you, just like what Pluto does. Yeah, and, and you mentioned what you mentioned again, like the, the crazy one, you know, people can, you know, yeah. literally start thinking that they're crazy and, and because it can be so <clears throat> much and you're tuning into so much and the thoughts and the ideas and the feelings, oh my God, you know, so this is one of the reasons I think Tony already mentioned, it's, it's important also to take a little bit time away from those crazy moments and just like, like, what is that I'm experiencing? What is it that I'm actually feeling? What is mine? Wow. What is mine? connect to nature, connect to animals, connect to wildlife. If you know Pluto is the main attributor of class sentient and and you're being overwhelmed by it, go to the opposite sign of Scorpio, which is Taurus, and ground yourself. Have some nourishing food that might help. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Just go and, you know, walk barefoot on the ground and really like ground into the soil. That's, That's what really Taurus different. like, you know, really does. And it can, it can, it can bring, bring polarity balance into yourself because otherwise you'll be always teetering at the boundary of one life form with another between the visible and the invisible realm. So it can be, it can be pretty rough <laughs> for some who has not come to terms with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to mention one thing though. Sometimes life ex- external life experiences such as trauma um, o- also ruled by Pluto can really make one um, develop class sentience on an accelerated speed because mm. when you're perpetually under crisis uh, there will come a point whereby you you will know that you you will need to finally hone those instincts, primal instincts, which is Scorpio, which is linked to class sentence as well. Um, be it that your life is or was at risk, um, this can come from like you possibly being attacked or severely abused. Because I've actually seen like. Um, uh, people who have a history of like be it physical or sexual abuse growing up, they usually have those situations provided for them to develop their class sentient abilities. Because it's almost like every day is like a survival struggle and they have to really hone in on that, um, that raw primal instinct. And they always have to act on the gut instinct before it comes to them, that situation, that unfavorable unfavorable situation they have to like somehow just build you know so they I mean? can sniff it out basically i mean before it comes um <laughs> pluto is also the bullshit filter <laughs> for sure so so you can sniff it from far and you just kind of react accordingly <clears throat> because you can just literally by split second you can penetrate right into the situation of things um and call call it out for what it is and other people, if you have very strong class sentient abilities, other people will feel uncomfortable around you because they sense that plutonic, all-consuming energy, auric stuff that you emanate. <laughs> it's almost like it's it's uh, some people are very drawn to you and some yes. people are very much afraid of you because they, I don't know if it's totally subconscious or it's more conscious as well, but they can, I don't know, sense it 
feel it somehow <clears throat> think it that it's uh that you can do do you can do the penetrating into their psyche to their deeper because every time, like, for example, like someone who's got very strong clairsentient ability, once their eyes shift to the person and really connect that eye contact, the other person will be so scared because they feel that you're seeing right through them, through their yeah. soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. why, like, um, I mean, Pluto being a penetrating planet, for people who are like more, like their Pluto is perhaps very well connected in their chart, um or having eight house planets as well um a lot of them it can really give them like an x-ray vision some even can develop telekinesis like moving objects with with your mind <laughs> i've heard of um, it but i've not seen proof yet let's 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 put it that way in my personal well but but this is like with the planetary linkage it can you know, it can be one of those. Mm. Um, because Pluto is also the planet that you can change things at will. So you can change things with your mind. This can be like, okay, depending whether you use it for like, for good or for otherwise. Okay. I just want to put it out there. <laughs> um, healing abilities. They're very good healers as well. And they can also be very good. Um, uh past life regression therapist because I talk about Pluto and the eight houses where you come from karmically um, to retrieve and heal memories from buried trauma, be it past or present lives. Um, and you will find that Claire's sentence really comes through with mediums as well. When I say mediums, this can be like um, talking to the dead, <laughs> um, or a ghost channeling, for, for example, um, or just connecting with a loved one through the through a third party, which is that medium. They need to be, they need to have very strong clairsentient abilities as well. Oh, and last but not least, Pluto, very strong Pluto, very strong eight house, and also very strong scorpionic placements may also bring you um, all those um, um, all those potential gifts and talents. What do you have actually on your end? Yeah, I think one of the first ones I, I want to mention is stellium in, in Scorpio. Okay. O obviously, a lot of right now, the stelliums in, in, that are involving Scorpio do have Pluto. You know, our, I think my generation has Pluto in Scorpio. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember when it started, but it's still like the mill millennials somewhere around that. I mean, in the 80s, right? Pluto was in, in 80s, Scorpio. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the 80s, yeah. So a lot of lot of millennials have um, uh, Pluto in Scorpio. Uh, also, Pluto in Cancer, in, in a water sign, okay. can also be, uh, uh, let's say, an indication of this. And from ancient, I don't know, I don't really like ancient traditional, you know, but some, some, some differences sometimes need to be made. You know, uh, the moon also ruled the body. So mm -hmm. uh, I do like uh, when I see a Pluto moon combination in some shape or form, okay. square opposition, conjunction, trine, <clears throat> sextile, you know, maybe to a less... Yeah. Wait, <laughs> you know, again, we get to the point of like sextile trying a little bit lazy, maybe at times square opposition, you're kind of forced into using it. Uh, conjunction, there's an abundance of that energy that for you to use and to penetrate and to feel and get those insights. So Pluto sitting near the luminaries, such as the moon or sun. Mm -hmm. um, Pluto in the first house. Mm or first house ruler, um, or you got stelliums in Scorpio, yeah. <laughs> um, or Pluto expecting Neptune, in which we have, if you are born in the second half of the, uh, of the 21st century. Um, Pluto expecting Mercury as well. It may also bring that because Mercury is a sensory perception or um, Pluto in the 12th house or 12th house ruler as well. And I want to mention Mars here 
specifically a little yeah. bit because it's you know a lot of mars martian energy is very physical and mars is one of the rulers let's say of the body and the natural ruler of the first house so <clears throat> i know you know pluto mars especially in a difficult aspect it's quite difficult right. to to channel and but it is an indication that you might be getting these sensations feelings into your body in your body you know with the pluto in play it can be uh, the fact that there is some kind of traumatic stuff there, trauma, uh, you know, closed there. And this is maybe one of the th reasons why it's kind of blocked, but it usually is still there. That's what I want to say. Even in difficult aspects. Yeah. I mean, I found that Pluto, Mars, because I've got a few clients um, who have that in their chart and either like during childhood they are severely sick and they have to really fight for survival to live mm -hmm. at a very young age um but on a more destructive way i've actually seen um pluto mars heart aspects like having potential eating disorders mm -hmm. as well like they somehow punish themselves or like there's this all this like brewing up of intensity of energies and darkness of energies they have to take it out on their physical body like punish their As, physical bodies basically yeah like some of them like develop anorexia which mm -hmm. i like just casually mentioned and that client just like just cracked you know what i mean in front of mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but then they can be very good advocators of such causes later on in their life mm -hmm. because they are they themselves are survivors of such a journey you want to mention as well like this is one of the keys with Pluto anyway to transform this and help other people transform it later you know um so it's it, it is super difficult I know it from a personal experience unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> you know but it's it's like that the, the things you start to transform within yourself be it you know what Tony just mentioned very difficult topics of of eating disorders and stuff like that Maybe it's more physical trauma again for you to or come, sexual trauma or, or sexual matter. very very difficult to handle. Yeah. But but it's still whenever you find ways out of it, <clears throat> you will feel more powerful and empowered in the world, and that will help you lead <clears throat> other people through those difficult situations as well. So don't you know keep going you know if if you're in a difficult situation and there's always help. There's always somebody who can you know guide you through it and and help you deal with it <clears throat> yeah i've also um written a list of astral significators um first thing that really comes to mind that comes to mind would be a water sign rising mm -hmm. cancer scorpio particularly scorpio <laughs> but cancer as well yeah. pisces is more like um yeah pisces as well why not but i do I do, I do, I do get the uh, Cancer and um, Scorpio energy more for rising signs, mm -hmm. and when there's a stellium um, in these two signs, or even better in the first house, mm -hmm. same sign as the rising sign in a water sign, um, it is even more indicative of that. The next thing I wrote is uh, Neptune or Moon in the first. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. And the next one, because as you mentioned earlier, um, Scorpio is not only co root by Pluto, which is the modern ruler, it's also traditionally root by Mars. So I've put here like a, a fire sign, uh, moon and or Mars. It can also um, help in terms of instinctively uh, picking up some stuff. Moon and also moon in areas. Like, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> like yourself, okay, like, <laughs> like you're giving away your chart. Uh, Mars in aspect to Uranus. It can also, mm. because um, Uranus is the higher octave of uh, Mercury. So it's like Mars in aspects to Uranus can also bring that as well, that that gut feel, that gut feeling that we've been talking about. Would you say um, also then um, Uranus, Uranus and Pluto in some sort of uh, it's like an aspect there? Sextile if they energy. are conjunct, yes, right. because like I think it's a Uranus Pluto conjunction. I think I mentioned in the last video that there's a um, 
there's a generation, I think born in 65 to 67. They have oh, yeah. Uranus and Pluto conjunct in Virgo, that generation in the mid uh, 1960s, opposing Chiron in Pisces. Mm-hmm. And at one point, Saturn in Pisces also joined in. So is that that uh, opposition. And I've got several clients from that generation and um, um, they, they feel things very deeply. <laughs> because externally, you're also dealing with the like civil rights movements, right? And all those, uh, like it's a global phenomenon mm-hmm. thing going on. I want to mention one more uh, that I just uh, kind of remember or came to me. Moon, like you said, in fire signs yeah. and would be even more emphasized when it's in water houses. So uh, that can be as well. Fourth, twelfth, and eighth, and with the yeah that combination. And with is the first, first, first as well first because it's the body. Mm-hmm. So like because the next point I've written is sun in fourth, eighth, and twelfth. <laughs> mm. house that can also bring some kind of you know because sun sun and mars mars being the traditional ruler of scorpio are like um they are both very hot planets and so they are energetic um auric field can be large can be slightly larger than than um than other elements and so it can have the outreach of like sensing stuff around them. The other point is the ascendant ruler in respect to Moon and Neptune. This so, can also bring Pluto, s- Pluto and Mars as well. With it. Pluto and Mars to include mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, even better that Sun uh, is in a water sign <laughs> mm. to start off with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one I have is Sun in aspect to Neptune and Pluto. Um, I usually will lump Pluto and Neptune together because in the second half of the 1900s, um, these two planets are in sextile all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's quite rare that, uh, I think if you hit the early 2000s, then they start to separate a little bit, but now they've come back in the sextile. So if Sun and Pluto actually aspect each other, then there's usually like a a Sun and Neptune aspect, whatever the aspect is as well. And this also uh, concerns the moon. So both luminary, Sun and moon, in aspect to Neptune, Pluto. Um, Heavy second house, fourth house and eighth house, talking about stelliums. And also 12th house, house, of course. Yeah. 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 And uh, South Node in uh, the water houses for 8, 12. And if it's in water sign, even there's even more emphasis. <laughs> so I would then add South Node with the ruler of the first or, uh, yeah, ruler of the first or maybe Mars as well. Or South Node ruler is in contact with Mars, Pluto, Pluto, yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Just to add it in there, the last one will be like we haven't talked about Venus. <laughs> we haven't. Um, so how about a Venus ruled Sun, Moon, or rising or Mars? Okay, in aspect to Neptune and uh, Neptune and or Pluto. Hmm. This can be like a Taurus or a Libra, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Mars in respect to Neptune and Pluto. Uh, one thing I, w- I would just like to add, for example, someone has got a Libra moon in respect to Neptune and Pluto. This means that you only can pick up information, psychic information in this case, accurately when you're working on a one-to-one basis. You can work in groups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because right. Libra is very much that that connection with one to one rather than like to a group. So why I mentioned that is because um, I've got a client who's got a Libra moon that it's in a um, in a yacht actually formation with uh, Neptune and Pluto. <laughs> 
and she works in a corporate environment, like you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. And um, and she usually picks up like stuff from other people that's not hers. Yeah. And she get very antsy um, about stuff. And uh, she she just have to learn. I've told her in in our um, session about some ways to really disconnect and really, you know, energetically. I would call it mind your own business. <laughs> Basically. But it is, it's very important, especially in those environments, because there are so many people, so many emotions, so many, you know, deadlines, difficult situations. You, you know, it's very common that if you work for someone there, you pick up on their energy and maybe they have, you know, a meeting or a deadline that they have to present something and they are very anxious and fearful of it. And you're picking mm. up on it and starting to kind of go into that anxiety as well. So you need to discern yourself <laughs> and see, like, you know, do your own thing there, kind of. <clears throat> do you have any charts that talk about Placentians? Oh, yes. Oh, or? yes. Here we go, guys. Do, do, do. Let's see about that. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, there it is. Can you see? Yeah. There it is. So, <laughs> 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 this think, is so freaking obvious. Yeah. This is the most, I think this is the, one of the most, this is one of the reasons why I love this chart. This is, uh, this is so freaking crazy obvious, but it's, it's also to me like a pretty, you know, somebody out there is living with all of this Scorpio energy and they need to ground it. They need to use it somehow. But let's say, let's say from a practical perspective, guys, if you see, you know, obviously this many um, <laughs> planets or influences in Scorpio, it kind of already is a given that the person, you know, have, has this clairsentience. But it even it doesn't have to be, you know, you know what we have here, like, you know, five like south node also in here. So we have so much in here. It doesn't have to be such a huge stellium in Scorpio. But uh, just to indicate or to, just to give you a practical example of what to what, what to look out for. Uh, and we see, you know, Pluto in the first house, exact, almost exact conjunction with the uh hmm. sun as well there and you know add to it the uh, moon mercury i mean this this person can probably feel everything all the time that everybody else is experiencing yeah quite i'll just like one. to add though because saturn is also included mm-hmm. in that stellium mm-hmm. saturn is fear mm-hmm. and saturn might saturn may actually block as well so even though there's a lot of like scorpio like planets that we've just talked about as the significators with like moon, Mercury, Sun, and Pluto, the Saturn can actually block it. Yeah, so and Saturn not in Scorpio allowing, isn't the easiest one. Not allowing like like the intensity to come in because maybe like there's just too much to to process. And, and um, look at this. It, it also it like you you know you see uh, Pluto, uh, Sun conjunction you also have saturn and moon conjunction as well it's it's kind of like even i don't know it can even be that in one part they're really taking in and they're really perceptive and the other part is like even doubting the fact that all of this stuff is coming in and i don't know what i'm feeling and i don't even want to feel this it it can also uh, manifest in in real life like this as well like being afraid of feeling that this celebrity is really banging on attracting an older um older um parental figure as a marriage partner to ground because when i look at such a such a huge stellium in uh in scorpio i look at what is in taurus and you got series the astra of nourishing and you know and uh parenthood North, North and also descendant seven house cusp mm-hmm. and then i look at um um the mars and jupiter and capricorn that provide some grounding as well and um i mean i use like jupiter pretty loosely it can be for either sex like the the partner 
um, because of the, you know, the gender roles is like, you know, it keeps evolving. So the partner, which is represented by Jupiter is in the sign of Capricorn. So it's like someone older, preferably as well. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's like the most um, direct way is to really, because seven house, right? When, when we go back to the Taurus um, cusp, is how you connect with the world. So maybe like be more, um, be more attentive to what you eat, maybe eat more, um, eat a whole bunch of uh, food that's more grounding, hopefully. <laughs> and not eat junk food, be more like clean eating because like uh, a series in Taurus, right? And it's good quality food that you're putting into your system. That may also help. And a practice inner stillness, which is uh, which is very much Taurus and uh, Scorpio axis. So maybe even meditation can help. As I mean, well. this person literally has to become uh, an emotional master with this much Scorpio energy. You have to become really, really good at feeling deep emotions, yeah, feelings uh, within your body. Um, it needs time. It probably, you know, we can see probably most likely not the easiest relationships with the father, um, ruler mm. of the tenth MC, in exact conjunction with the Pluto. Some you know power manipulation games with the with the father there the other you know it's 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 <clears throat> most issues with the father need to be resolved need to be really good at feeling your your body feelings then you can probably in, in this case then you can probably use those um gifts you know in a lot and also like what to... what adds to the um psychic intuitive nature of this person is that chiron in the eighth house as well yeah. yeah, there it is. And also that black moon Lilith in a fiery sign, a fire sign Lilith is also uh, pretty uh, class sentient. That's what we somewhat missed out just now. <laughs> <laughs> but then the ruler of Aries, which is Mars, is in Capricorn, which can take quite some time to develop or, or is either that uh, she will only master it in her later years, Capricorn as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. anything more to add it's pretty straightforward right this it's chart? pretty pretty straightforward guys just look out for just look out for you know this tell him <laughs> okay okay just joking <laughs> <laughs> but anyway just look, if there's so many things in scorpio you can pretty much um make that assumption pretty quickly i've got one example mm -hmm. as well to share and i've got the uh the chart of the present Dalai Lama. Mm. <laughs> Very interesting chart as well. Um, to start off with, Sun and Pluto and Ascendant all in the watery sign of Cancer. And... In first as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. First as well. I use Placidus, uh, unlike a uh, whole sign house system used by Ian just now. And uh, the 10 house cusp, which is the MC, starts in the sign of Pisces, mm -hmm. which is also another water sign. So water, water to start off with. Um, what really struck me is that I, I really focus on that first house, uh, Pluto, which is one of the significators of class sentience. The ruler of that sun, uh, Pluto and ascendant, which is moon, it is... In Virgo, another um, pretty psychic intuitive sign. Mm -hmm. I think we've mentioned like two or three episodes before. Um, it's conjunct Neptune. <laughs> and it's conjunct Black Moon Lilith. So it's all this tree together. Oh. And it's in his third house of speaking, communication, and sensory mm -hmm. perception. So I think he can actually, he heals people through his words as well. Yeah, words of wisdom. And spiritual wisdom, which is very much captured in uh, uh, um, Moon, Neptune, and Lilith, all conjunct in the third house. Mm -hmm. And all these three are opposed by Saturn uh, yeah. in Pisces in the ninth house. Mm -hmm. And this can really make him like, a, like a, someone that really gives out um, spiritual wisdom as an elder, Saturn. <laughs> Probably Communicate pretty, to the people, 
Moon, probably pretty yeah. strict uh, belief systems, though. Kind of like yeah. that pattern there in the ninth. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, but but the but the saving grace is that this opposition uh, forms a wedge to Jet Jupiter in in Scorpio. Mm-hmm. So it's spicy uh, as well. Okay. Yeah. That that Jupiter actually forms like a trine sextile to this opposition, so kind of like alleviates the stress. Alleviates, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jupiter and it's in his fifth house, Scorpio. Um, where the Jupiter lies. So is that. Again, the spiritual wisdom again. And so you can see every time that he imparts like spiritual wisdom to others, yes, it's awakening. It is very sobering message, quite realistic as well. Saturn, right? Saturn is yeah, very earthly yeah, by nature. Very practical. Because but, Virgo, then that, yeah, yeah. but then that Jupiter in Scorpio, like it literally just penetrates right through your soul. So I've had, I've actually seen like um, for this video I've actually seen one or two videos of his Q and A sessions where people ask him questions the N nine house. Mm-hmm. Um, that even like slightly before the person even finishes his or her sentence, his answer is already there. <laughs> He's really got the answer almost like downloaded and it's like it's ready to go. You know what I mean? And that can be that Jupiter in the Scorpio in the fifth house playing up. And not to mention that a Scorpio, co-ruler of Scorpio is Pluto and back into his first house again in, uh, in Cancer, that Pluto. I also want to mention that um, although this video is all about clear sentience, but then it's like he once you have one, you have multiple coming in as well. And we just look at his 12th house, where Mercury is, and also Chiron in Gemini in the 12th house, which means that even in his dreams or meditation, there's still message downloads coming through. Certainly. And this can be very much of a clairaudient ability in our previous episode. Gem- Gemini, and, in Gemini. Uh, and um, that third house stallion with like... Um, well, actually, Venus is not in Virgo, but you know, it's still in the third house. Like three planets and Lilith all in the third house. This can really give some form of uh, potential um, um, clairvoyant ability as well, because that moon Neptune also sextile that sun in the first house and also the ascendant. So when you have one, usually there's a spillover effect because the significators just overlap each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. Yeah. And uh, North Node in a seven house ruler, Saturn is in a water sign. (laughs) As well. And the South Node ruler, um, which is uh, Cancer, a uh, south node in Cancer, the ruler is the sun in a water sign. So both nodal axis ruler are both in water signs. Can go on and on with this. So. <laughs> See you guys, it's quite clear cut there. <laughs> yeah. But um, the, some of the indicators, some of the examples, hopefully this will help you kind of um ground this information i guess and mm-hmm. start looking for start looking out for for different um kinds of um, indicators yeah and rem- remember to test it out in the real world as well and start feeling and start if you're going to different spaces different places different people like just notice what's happening in your body and what you're feeling and well but honestly like, like right now in the kind of abnormal dystopian um, scenario we're living in going to a crowded place isn't as uh, common. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't go to a, like a <laughs> concert. <laughs> you know, maybe just even like what you can actually do in these times is if you have a Zoom meeting, online meeting, uh, you can even uh, test it out there as well because you know right. you're you're tuning into that energy as well and see if it feels closed what what sensations are in your body and um 
This is how you do it. This is how you do it. Yeah. That's so to the next act. So then. Oh yes, we have. I think we have a couple more planned. Or do we? Yeah, I mean the the comments the comments are very encouraging. I mean it's like, oh you know like after you talk about this, why not talk about this? Why not talk about this? I don't know how long this series will be, you know, going on for. But hey, as 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 good as the last. Basically, guys, we're going to do more. Um, we yeah. have we have already planned some, um, and we're kind of taking it as we go. If more yeah. information wants to be shared and you you are encouraging with us with your comments, of course, yeah. and you know, let let us know there, you know, what you would like to know more about, what indicators, you know, etc. And we'll do our best to offer this to you in the next videos. Yeah, and if you want to contact us for a reading, everything will be in the description box, anyways. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Thanks very much Bye. for watching, listening. Bye, Bye guys.